Safe Anesthesia Administration relies on a properly functioning anesthesia machine. Malfunctions can result in hypoxia, hypercarbia, anesthetic overdose, or ventilatory failure. Consequently, a systematic pre-use check is essential to ensure that all components, mechanical, pneumatic, and electronic are functioning correctly prior to induction. The anesthesia machine should be connected to a reliable power source, and the battery status should be checked to ensure adequate backup operation. Manual ventilation devices, including bag mask ventilation and alternative airway devices, must be immediately available in case of electrical or pneumatic failure. There are two sources of gas supply to the anesthesia machine, the cylinder and the pipeline supply. Oxygen, nitrous oxide, and air cylinders must be correctly mounted, labeled, and fully pressurized. Each cylinder should be briefly opened to verify adequate pressure and then closed, as cylinders serve primarily as a backup and should not be relied upon as the primary gas source. The pipeline supply connections to wall outlets should be verified, ensuring correct color coding with pipeline pressures typically around 50 psi as indicated on the machine's gauges. In daily practice, visual inspection of connections and pressures is generally sufficient, though testing the low-pressure alarm by disconnecting the oxygen pipeline or verifying automatic crossover from pipeline to cylinders is important for training and troubleshooting. After confirming that both cylinder and pipeline supplies are adequate, the anesthesia machine should be switched on to initiate the automatic self-check sequence. Most modern machines perform this self-test automatically once powered on, assessing internal components such as flow sensors, pressure transducers, vaporizers, valves, and alarms. Following this, the anesthetist proceeds with manual checks, including flow meter function, leak testing, vaporizer function, breathing circuit integrity, scavenging system, ventilator function, and monitor alarms. The breathing system, including hoses, reservoir bag, CO2 absorber, and APL valve, should be visually inspected for integrity and correct assembly. Both the manual and automatic circuit leak test should then be performed as guided by the machine's on-screen instructions, following the manufacturer's protocol. The flowmeter should be inspected for smooth and accurate movement of the bobbin or float within the tube, ensuring it rotates freely and rises proportionally with gas flow. It should be checked for any sticking, dirt, or moisture that might cause erratic readings. Vaporizers should be mounted securely and upright. The correct agent must be loaded, and the fill level verified. Interlocks must function properly, preventing simultaneous activation of multiple vaporizers. The control dial should be rotated through its full range and returned to zero to ensure smooth operation. The ventilator should be connected to a test lung, with appropriate tidal volume and respiratory rate selected. Bellows or piston movement should be smooth, with pressures within expected ranges. Disconnecting the test lung should trigger a disconnection alarm, confirming proper function. This test should be performed routinely according to institutional policy or routinely as a part of the pre-use check, usually at the start of each anesthesia session. The CO2 absorber must be firmly seated with no leaks. Soda lime should be inspected for color and replacement time. Fresh absorbent is typically white, while violet or pink indicates exhaustion, though color changes depend on the type of absorber used. As the color may revert to white on standing, it is important to check the date of the last change. The scavenging system should be inspected by tracing the tubing from the anesthesia machine to the exhaust or vacuum system, ensuring there are no kinks, leaks, or disconnections. Suction should then be tested by connecting a Yankower or suction catheter and briefly activating it to confirm effective function. Finally, we should ensure that suction equipment is immediately accessible during induction to manage secretions or airway emergencies without delay.
All monitors should be activated, including ECG, SpO2, non-invasive blood pressure, and tidal CO2, and anesthetic gas analyzers. Alarm limits should be appropriately set, and audible alerts confirmed. Oxygen analyzers should be calibrated filling the on-screen instruction. Finally, the final pre-induction check should be performed using the SOAP mnemonic.